Joined today by Chad Ganey in studio. He is a local artist and usually is working with, with different types of wood and trees and making sculptures like that. Though today you're teaching us how to carve a pumpkin just in time for Halloween. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, have, you know, talking about a little bit of tips that you can, you can use at home to yes. carve your perfect pumpkin, whether it be a, a typical jack-o'-lantern <laughs> style like the one I'm working on here, or if it's something more 3D. Yeah, uh, this like one's super cool. Like a spooky jack-o'-lantern over That's there. That's right. A lot of questions that I get are, um, how do you pick the right pumpkin? How do you tell? Uh, you, want, you always want one that has a, has a green stem when okay. you're looking in there because the green stem is just a healthier pumpkin and there's still actually nourishments in the stem that continue feeding the pumpkin okay. after it, it's cut from the vine. So Very cool. um, that'll, that'll help your pumpkin last a little longer. Also the heavier pumpkins obviously are going to have a thicker wall. Sure. Thicker walls are good for doing 3D stuff but okay. whenever you're doing a jack-o'-lantern um, the thinner walls actually make it easier to, to cut through and cut through cleanly. Um, Another question I get all the time is how do you preserve your pumpkin after you carve it? Right, I always and wonder that. Yeah, yeah, it gets moldy and you end up right. like kicking it off the porch or, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> or just have to throw it, it away because yeah. it smells or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. starting to rot. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, there's nothing you can do that's, that's really going to make it last forever, but you can put like a lemon juice on there. Okay. Um, lemon juice or vinegar, stuff like that. It kills the bacteria that might be growing on there. Yeah. And also when, when your pumpkin's not on display, say in the evening or you leave and go to work, you can stick it in the refrigerator and that'll give you a couple extra days of life out of that pumpkin. Interesting. Okay, yeah, so clean out your fridge. If you <laughs> have to make a jack o' lantern, maybe make some space and, and stick it in there, especially during the daytime if you're not going to light it up maybe until the night. You can kind of preserve it by putting it in the fridge. Very cool. Tell us yeah. kind of again about the tools that you've been using so people at home can, can maybe make their own. Lauren's predicting that there's might be a little rain, so if it showers this weekend, you had some outdoor plants, maybe they could make a pumpkin instead. Absolutely. Yeah, I like to use, uh, for the 3D ones, I yeah. use clay sculpting tools. And these are called ribbon tools. You can get these at any, you know, arts and crafts store. Okay. And that uh, can dig into the flesh and right. just kind of peels a, a ribbon out of there. Um, and those work really good because you can just kind of dig and, and little as you go. Right. They sell them in, you know, they're in variety packs, so they have all different shaped ends uh, for doing different things. If I'm doing a jack-o'-lantern style like this one, I like to use a little saw that's... Uh, almost like a little hand jigsaw. Yeah, show us and how you use it. Can you saw in there yeah, first? Yeah, absolutely. So with this, you can you can saw and you can actually curve a lot better than you can with a, with a knife. Okay. Um, so if you're using a, a regular kitchen knife, it gets stuck in there right. and it makes it hard to actually cut those those curves. Right. But with this, it just, it makes it simple to, um, Get Make all those nice, clean out. lines. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, we've loved having you in studio, and you've made us, of course, this awesome WMBB pumpkin. We're going to have that on display in the station until Halloween.